All right, so for that, we're gonna have to do a few checks. I'm gonna do a, a leak check. We'll see if the, the leak detector picks it up and then I'll check with bubbles, but it is very shiny uh, in that one area. But the good thing is the fan's off. I don't remember if this has, I don't think it has any pressure controls. I could be wrong, but I don't think it has any pressure controls unless something kicked it out because I haven't worked on these in a while, the Charlestons, but uh, the, the fan is off. So there's no, nothing, there's no power to the compressor and the fan. So I don't think the compressor's bad, but I have to do a few checks because if the compressor's bad, then that's a whole other quote versus a, a, a leak repair. So um, let me double check the leak. Let's see if we have any pressure in it. Maybe it all leaked out. And then let's see, make sure our windings are closed, see where the power got cut out or, or what. So that was quickly approved. Uh, we're back here the next morning and it was, it's nice out, it's cloudy. So it's not a bad day to be outside, but we're gonna be indoors today. And uh, it was 43 uh, low yesterday. It's 75 today, that's, that's Texas for you. Um, so <clears throat> just so you guys know, cause I, I probably won't be able to talk in inside, but I'll, I'll record and I'm gonna, we're gonna first deal with the wiring, right? So I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna cut off those Molex connectors. I'm just gonna splice them together. There's connectors like everywhere. So like I can disconnect it at, at another point. There's no issue there. There's just too damn many of those things. So splice everything together. Hopefully the wiring is still good when we cut it back. Um, the plug, I will say the plug to the controller I forgot what it's called. It's, it's like the Charleston controller. It's what handles defrost, not the digital one. It's it's in the back. It's like the defrost controller. It, it it tells it when to turn on and off the compressor. So there's line voltage feeding the compressor. And then there's another line voltage that deals with the heaters. So that's kind of like the defrost controller. Um, I will say that the, that Molex, that plug, going to i believe it's to the compressor is also it, it overheated it's burnt up but it still works <clears throat> so i don't have any of those connections i have to see if i can even find it so that one i i will leave alone and plug it back in just because it works there's a good connection i get good voltage coming out of it um but i will fix the rest of it by removing the molex connectors and um fixing all the wiring i just won't be able to fix that one that one's going to be plugged back in after that we're going to run the system turn it on plug it in 
and see if the compressor works. Now I need to check pressures. I don't know how much is left. It probably leaked most of it out. So we're going to turn it on just for a, a quick minute, make sure it pumps. If it pumps, if the fan motor comes on, if everything else works, then I'll unplug it and we'll get started on the, uh, the leak repair. So we're just gonna cut out the T. Uh, hopefully I can just pull it down and, and kind of connect the two. After cutting it, connect the two lines. We don't need that T, we did put a service port in it. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So hopefully nothing else is wrong with it. We can just fix the wiring, fix the, the leak, and then get it going for them. Now, why can't it just be that easy, right? It works, it pumps, uh, it wasn't cooling, there's not really anything in there anymore. So now we gotta get to that patch repair. <clears throat> so I'm gonna cut it out. I actually got lucky, I have one dryer for quarter inch left. We're dealing with quarter inch pipe. And like I said, we're gonna cut out that piece that's leaking, eliminate a, uh, a weak point because it just hangs and it ends up cracking. Um, the little T that comes off and then change out the dryer vacuum and uh, it's 404 I have it plenty of that so we're good let's get started on the rest of it and we'll get the trusty old torch kit I've shown this before but it makes life so much easier so we'll get that down real quick Yeah, 
I just bought this one my one of my guys wanted one i gave him the one that i had while i waited for this to come in and they're having a promotion i give them the extra battery and everything i felt like they were different navac added these little uh i guess these little blockers here so the makita doesn't fit anymore i'll probably have to shave those two down so that we could utilize that or i'll have to or if I don't want to mess with it, I'll trade my guy again and give him the new one. Because that kind of sucks because I was counting on using that. And then I just bought an adapter that I can use Milwaukee batteries on here. But I don't know if that's going to work either. So we're going to use a fill piece, I guess. Man, I feel so lazy that I have everything on wheels now. I've converted to like tool bags on wheels, the torches on wheels. I feel like I don't do as much now. Everything's super simple, but that's a good thing, right? My back feels better. My my knees, I have bad knees. So I feel lazy at times because stuff goes way smoother now, but uh, it's a good change, right? Just whatever makes your job easier, do it. All right, so we got everything brazed in. Um, just wanted to show how tight these areas are because I do walk-ins, so I do bigger units. I do a lot of light commercial, and then I do a lot of these uh, reach-ins. So I've always said the smaller the unit is, the harder it is to work on, um, just because they're they're so fragile. They're so you know, there's no space. They're so, they're so tight in that in areas, and. Um, I wasn't wearing gloves today. Make sure you wear your gloves. And I cut up my hand a little bit, but managed to do it, bent the piping. I used to be afraid to do that kind of stuff, but um, as long as I don't kink the pipe and it's whatever, if I had kinked it, I would have replaced that piece, but uh, we didn't kink anything. Just kind of like bent it. And sometimes you gotta 
push it back stretch it out you know do whatever you can to get that connection to go through because i really i mean i almost did i, I just really didn't want to put a, a coupling or anything to give me a, an extra joint because right there we got one that we have to worry about brazing in we have put a coupling then we got two joints you know you you add yourself another leak point which is also why if you guys were eagle-eyed um i i unsweated the filter dryer so i could put the new one in the exact same spot without having to add uh piping which would have given me an extra joint two extra joints on on this one because they the way they had the filter dryer ran um it gave you like a little 90 and no slack so there was nowhere to cut so i know you're not supposed to unsweat them but this is real world this is what happens i wasn't going to add more joints more leak points more piping it was a quarter inch i was the flame wasn't on it that long i will say though that that set that I, and i've showed it before so i'll leave a link to that video um in the description maybe it'll pop up um i have that uh it's like a jeweler's uh or a jewelry torch set torch kit but it's for hvac so so it gets really hot uh it gets it gives off a good flame and then those tips are amazing it has a rosebud um a couple of different sizes like a small and a bigger flame and then the uh that little twin tip i've used or i bought a twin tip right before i bought this kit for my regular torches uh before i kind of changed everything out and uh it was a little overkill it gave off a huge flame uh, i don't remember the like if they had a size or anything but this being like a mini kit i was like let me try it out because i didn't want the flame to shoot out because i was using that flexible tip that i really enjoy using i know a lot of people hate it it works it, it helps uh, but that's more for like bigger equipment so like it was a little too big the flame was a little too big so i was like let me see what other one i can use kind of, i was kind of thinking between rosebud and the twin tip uh just because it would have made it quicker if, if i had used a rosebud and it's a small rosebud but i tried the twin tip and it worked really well on that dryer i'll show you what the dryer looked like i didn't protect it i know you're supposed to but i mean that's just to protect the the paint the coat um of course you don't want to overheat any dryer whether it's new or old but it didn't burn the paint it didn't burn the dryer um, i was able to concentrate it um, it's a twin tip so you got two flames i was able to concentrate it on the joint at, I, and i'm not used to it so it took me a little while or a few seconds like to to kind of maneuver it but got it on there got it hot got the solder on it wrapped around really nice uh you still have to move it around a little bit just to kind of like uh the solder flows with heat so you kind of want to i like to move it around uh, the flame around to allow the solder to kind of chase it and uh it sealed up really nicely it did it really quickly uh i wasn't burning anything in, be in the back i wasn't burning the filter dryer itself and then when i did the bigger joint which was a half inch we did a quarter inch that was quick obviously and then when we did the half inch it did it really well i, I burnt a little bit of the insulation that's going to happen uh, cause I didn't protect <clears throat> anything that way, but like I didn't burn any of the, the cords, the wiring, the panels on the back. It was very concentrated on the line and I really like that twin tip, but it's a mini, it's like a mini twi uh, twin tip. Uh, I must start using it a lot more, especially for dryers. It didn't burn. I didn't have to protect it. Uh, usually when you, when you go and, and you put in the dryers without putting putty, without putting a rag or anything on it, which <clears throat> you're in a lot of tight spots in refrigeration anyway uh, if you're doing ac you have all the room in the world uh ac units but um usually you can see that they're all black on the ends after somebody braids them in so uh visually look great solder the solder wrapped around really nice and uh, i really enjoyed that tip so uh, i think the vacuum is hitting 300 so i'm gonna go close off one side do the decay all that good stuff and make sure that we don't have anything or any issues with it
All right, so we're uh, we're done. We're we're done with that uh, reach in freezer. It worked fine. It dropped to ten degrees really quick. As I was picking up, it dropped, uh, and it was already freezing in there. Uh, I I it I think it called for twenty ounces because it, the it's an old system. It's already uh, all scratched away. From what I could tell, it was twenty ounces. So I tried weighing it on the ladder. It actually worked. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I always try to keep a flat surface for the scale, but I was able to kind of estimate around 20 ounces in there. I kind of overshot it just in case because we have a um, a bigger dryer, but I still wanted to keep it as close as possible to, to 20 ounces. And then you just want to watch your pressures. Um, we, had good, we had good pressures, your high side, right? If it's 75 degrees in there, you want about 20 to 30 degrees over that. So like it shouldn't be over 105 degrees on your high side. We, we did everything we could. It ran perfectly. I think it's going to run. They got a lot of life out of it, so it's good for them. They wanted it fixed. Um, and that's it. Pretty simple. Uh, it was a, a long repair. I mean, it took me a few hours, but did our electrical repair did it did fine i'll look into how to repair that plug because the plug from the defrost control going out to the uh, compressor i try to show it it is charred and one one of the pins is like the tip is broken but it still goes in and still reads 122 volts i don't see any issue with it it's just i don't like that kind of that kind of connection so i've told them they need to do maintenance because of that that compressor runs hot that coil gets dirty it overheats it starts burning up stuff that's just that's on them on maintenance there's nothing i can do about that and uh yeah um i hope i covered everything hopefully this was uh hopefully you enjoyed the video at least i don't know if you got anything out of it but um getting back into it i know i, I haven't done too many uh videos i feel like i'm very rusty and uh more more to come a lot of podcasts uh those are having great episodes um more tool videos more work videos I'm, I'm still here i'm still i'm still gonna record and, and do all this stuff and hopefully it helps you guys i appreciate you all and i'll see you guys